And so we return to our text in Matthew chapter 3. And let's examine what Yeshua says to John and try to shed some light for you on the actual manner and method of baptism, of immersion. Matthew records the following conversation, verse 13. John says, um, I need to be baptized by you, and you, yet you come to me. And Yeshua said, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then John permitted Jesus to be baptized or to immerse himself. Just a note on righteousness. Yeshua here is not a sinner that needs his sins remitted. The word righteousness as he's using it here is actually the same way in which his apostle Paul uses the word righteousness in his letter to the Romans. You should listen to my three-tape set on Paul, reassessing Paul in the Protestant paradigm in which I show the word righteousness here, tzedakah, is a parallel term to the word salvation, Yeshua, to the term covenant faithfulness, chesed, and emunah. And Jesus is saying, in effect, John, you are God's man. And later he will say, he is the Elijah who was to come. He's come in the spirit of Elijah to announce Messiah's arrival. And Yeshua wants to, in effect, confirm that John is part of God's great salvation, redemptive purpose in the earth. And so for tzedakah's sake, for righteousness sake, for salvation's sake, let it be so, John. And then we read, verse 16, After being immersed, Yeshua came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And the voice said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Let's talk about it for a moment. First of all, we know a great deal about Jewish immersion. There's a whole tractate in the Talmud, Mikvaot, that talks extensively about ritual immersion, about the mikveh, M-I-Q-V-E-H, the mikveh or the immersion pool in, that one would enter for the purpose of immersion. And let me share with you some of the principal points about this that will help you to understand what Jesus of Nazareth actually did. First of all, the mikveh was of a specified size. It had to hold a minimum of 40 seahs of water, which is approximately 240 gallons. In the tractate mikvaot, the plural of mikveh, it talks about six different orders or levels of maim, of water, that are appropriate or are permitted for ritual immersion. And this is the important point. Immersion in the Jewish context was for ritual purification, not for the remission of sins. It's a symbol of repentance, but it's a, an activity that's done for ritual purity. Among these six levels of water that are permitted in baptism, the highest level, in other words, that which is considered the most auspicious, is flowing water, such as water in a river, like the Jordan, the Yarden, the descending river. It is called Maim Chaim, living waters, terminology that Yeshua is going to use. And it was done, as I say, for ritual purity. It's hard for us to relate to this concept of ritual purity having to do with the precincts of the temple and so forth. It's so alien to our culture and world. We intrinsically tend to think in terms of moral categories. But you just need to understand, this had to do with ritual uncleanliness or cleanliness. Before example, For example, before the high priest would serve his duties on Yom HaKippurim, he would undergo ritual immersion. 
for purity. The priests, before they could offer the sacrifices at the temple, would undergo ritual immersion. And before one would enter into the precincts of the temple, holy ground, one would be ritually immersed. Jesus and his disciples would have undergone ritual immersion. Before Jesus' parents, before they would have gone into the temple precincts, would have undergone ritual immersion. It was a practice widespread, used in many ways. This whole issue of purity has to do with life, the separation of life from death. This was the manner of Yeshua's baptism. It was done to demonstrate that John was part of God's tzedakah, his righteous, salv salvific, redemptive work in the earth. He's part of God's plan. And Jesus submits to this, confirming and affirming that God's at work. What a significant event. And as he came straightway up out of the water, he was confirmed and affirmed by his Father in heaven. This is the first, but not the only incident, where a voice from heaven speaks about Yeshua. And like a good Jewish father, affirms his son. In this case, he says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased.